Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors and our Urinymphing series. This is volume four of our Basics for Beginners portion of the series. And if, you, if you're just finding this series now, I kind of recommend that you go back to the beginning and kind of watch from the beginning because the first three volumes are everything you need to know before you hit the water. And today we're just starting to hit the water. So I'd really recommend that you start there first. I'm gonna have all of the videos linked down in the description and I'm also going to link it here in a playlist. All the videos will be in that playlist and I'll be updating that playlist as we add more videos to the series. So the beginner series is gonna be, it looks like it's gonna be five volumes and then we're gonna go on to some advanced materials as well. So. You know, I definitely hope you guys are going to join us for the entire series. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you know as we release videos in this series. So volume four is going to cover a lot of important topics that are going to be the first things that you're going to deal with when you're on the water, right? So we're going to be talking a lot about casting and in different casts in different types of situations and when you potentially want to do that. We're going to be talking a lot about line management. Line management is going to be really key to be able to detect those strikes and to be able to keep that tight line from the tip of your rod down to your flies. And then finally, we're going to be talking about achieving the drift and the drift is going to be really crucial for staying in the strike zone as long as possible and just giving you the best opportunity of finding and catching fish. And we've been talking a lot about the 10,000 subscriber giveaway that we're going to be doing and we are getting closer and closer to that every day. We're going to be giving away a really sweet fly rod. We're going to give away the seven and a half foot three weight Beaver Metal S glass. This is the new S glass from JP Ross. It's going to be customized with our white dog logo, so definitely excited to give that away. But for now, let's get into Euronymphing Basics for Beginners, Volume 4. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about casting. When you're Euronymphing, Casting is very different than what you might be used to with traditional fly fishing. So with traditional fly fishing, you're using the weight of the line to be able to load the rod and you're typically casting long distances, right? So you got a heavy line, that's what's loading the rod and you're going back and forth to be able to deliver the presentation that you want. Euronymphing is nothing like that. Euronymphing is basically the opposite. With Euronymphing, we're using really thin lines that weigh almost nothing and you're casting the weight of your flies that are at the end of your line. So instead of casting the line, we're casting the weight of the flies. So I don't want you to think traditional fly casting where you're going back and forth, right? If you go back and forth in like the 10 to two motion with, with uh, urine and thing, you're basically gonna end up with a rat's nest of your flies. So that is the surest way to be able to get a nice little tangle in your flies. With urine and thing, I want you to think oval, right? <clears throat> so we're gonna go the fly rod is gonna go in an oval around your head, right? And the flies are gonna go in an oval around your head, okay? So that is essentially what our fly cast is. So let's go through this a little bit in detail, okay? So I'm basically trying to achieve an area that's going to be my drift, right? Okay, so when I get to the end of my drift, I'm gonna set the hook, I'm gonna keep my rod low, it's gonna propel around behind my head, I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna bring the rod around, and I'm gonna flick forward into the current where I wanna go. So I'm, again, I'm creating that oval, right? And so essentially what I'm doing is I'm starting my drift up here, I'm ending it here, I'm setting the hook, bringing it around my head and delivering it back into the water. Okay, so when we did the video, the five mistakes you make when you're urine thing, we, we went over casting, but a lot of people wanted, they, they felt like a lot of the videos just kind of skipped over a lot of the basics when it comes to casting. So I'm gonna give you a couple of I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that are gonna help, right? So there was a lot of questions about how much line should I have out? How do I control my line? Stuff like that. And control of the line is gonna be really important when you're casting because you wanna quickly get in contact with those flies and maintain contact the entire time so that you can feel and see what's going on and be able to set the hook effectively, right? So now I have a very small piece of water in front of me. On larger water, it'd be similar, except I'd start reaching a little bit further out. So the first thing I'll say is start with very little line out. You basically want enough line out that you're gonna be able to keep contact from the tip of your rod down to the flies for the given piece of water that you have in front of you, right? So for me right now, I don't have hardly any more than my high visibility cider out and my six or so feet of tippet out. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm fishing kind of a, a, a nice little run here, but it's not a very long distance away from me. So I'm basically gonna be fishing directly under the rod tip. So I don't need a lot of line out. So when I do this, I'm gonna cast up and I'm basically just keeping a tight line on these with not a whole lot of, with not a whole lot of, um, of line out, right? So you can see, I don't have a ton of line out. I basically got just a little bit more than my, um, actually part of the high visibility cider is still in there. Granted, I use a long cider piece because I, I wanna be able to have more flexibility when I'm fishing, um, but I don't have a whole lot more than just that cider out. Now, if I wanna start stretching further, then that's fine. I'm gonna, oops. Oh, did I lose a fly? No, I didn't. So now if I wanna start stretching out further, I'm gonna let more line come out, right? So on the cast, I'm gonna let it go a little bit further, right? And I'm gonna, I don't have the current out there to do it now, but here, why don't I take a step back? We'll pretend that the current is a little bit further away from me, right? So I'm gonna do my cast. I'm gonna get a little bit more line out. And you can see I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a tight, tight, tight line, but my, my flies are a, de a decent bit further away from me. So I, I've got more of an angle going in than I did before. Before I was straight under my rod tip, now I'm more at an angle, right? So my heavy flies and my light lines are gonna help me achieve that straight line even though I'm a little bit further away from me, okay? I'm gonna take a step back even further if I can without catching a tree here. And we'll be able to see a little bit more about what it's like. I'm gonna keep it right in that current. I'm much further away now. I'm much further away, but I can still keep contact with where my flies are. I wanna get a little bit further out. I can still keep contact with where my flies are even though I'm significantly further away. There, that's a good drift right there, right through the middle of that, even though I'm a little bit further away. Right, so nymphing is, your nymphing is a very close quarters fishing. This is almost as far as I'm ever really gonna go in the water. Maybe I'll go a little bit further sometimes, but I'm gonna have really heavy flies when I do that to be able to keep contact and be able to, to kind of stretch out. Um, that line is significantly out from where the tip of my rod is. Okay, so, in terms of the amount of line that you have out, it all has to do with how far away you're fishing. And you're literally just gonna, and it's gonna be very dependent on your leader as well, how long you have your leader tied. Um, but you're gonna have to judge how, how it feels and whether or not you can keep in contact. Here's the bottom line. The rule is you need to keep, I would keep as little line out as possible while being able to keep contact with those flies as they're fishing the exact part of the water that you want, okay? It's gonna take a little bit of adaptability to figure out exactly what that needs to look like depending on the water that you're fishing. All right, so that's the oval cast, but what if I want to cast, what if I've got really fast water in front of me and I need more time to get those flies down, or I've got deeper water in front of me and I need a little bit more time to get those flies down? Ideally, what you can do is, number one, you need to be using heavy flies, right? If you're in fast water, deeper water, heavier flies are gonna be able to get down faster and they're gonna get you into the strike zone sooner. If I need more time to let that, those flies sink, I need to cast further upstream, right? And if I need to cast further upstream, that means I need to use more line, okay? If I'm gonna do that, I then have to make sure that I'm controlling my line appropriately, right? So as soon as I cast upstream, the current's gonna start bringing that line down to me. If I don't have good line management, when that, line gets, when that fly gets down to me, my line's gonna be all over the place, right? So we need to do a couple of things. And you should be doing this on every cast no matter what, First thing is on my rod hand and my middle finger, I always loop the line through my middle finger. Okay, that's gonna help me maintain a lot of control. If I didn't do that and I had the line in my left hand and the rod in my right hand and they're a couple of feet apart from each other sometimes, what happens when I wanna do something with the line? I don't have a way to grab the line and I'm getting all messed up, right? First thing I do, as soon as I make a cast, I'm gonna loop that line right through my middle finger so that you, I then have control of the line. The other thing that that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to keep a, a tighter line from the tip of my rod down to those flies, and I'm gonna, 
a lot of times I'll watch when I, when I get a strike, I'll see the bottom part of my line tighten up. I feel that right in my hand, right in my finger. And if I've got this line tight, I'm also going to feel it in the rod. It's going to increase my sensitivity of being able to detect a strike. If you don't have good line management, you will not be detecting strikes. You've got to manage that line. Okay. So the first step is loop that line through your middle finger. Okay. The second step is I need to make sure that I'm maintaining the amount of line out on the river as necessary, right? So I want to keep that as little as possible, right? So if I'm going to cast upstream, I'm going to cast further upstream to be able to get down to a deep spot or a fast spot in front of me, I need to give more line upstream, right? So let's, let's get a little more line upstream, right? So I got a lot more line upstream. Now watch what I'm doing. I got my, my line through my middle finger and I'm stripping that line to keep the right amount of line. Now that it's in front of me, <laughs> I actually got down too deep. This is shallower than I want it to be, but um, I'm stripping that line and it's going to allow it to get down to depth so that when it gets to the area in front of me, I've got control. Okay. Now I'm in my prime drift. I'm going to drift it through as slowly as I possibly can to get down to the bottom. All right. And when it gets down toward the bottom, I'm going to reach down and give it a little bit of extra drift too, by reaching the rod down below me. And then I can pull out and start my next cast. Okay. So when you're, when you're using more line or you're trying to get further upstream, you are going to need more line management. Line through the middle finger, stripping to keep in contact with that line, getting it down to the prime drift or prime depth, and then you know keeping and maintaining that contact. Okay, line management is going to be really important. You're not going to detect, detect strikes without it. Um, and I think once you get out on the river, practice these things, try a few different places, try a few different pieces of water. Every piece of water is going to be a little bit different. You're going to utilize these casts a little bit different. But if you understand the basics of how this goes, you're going to be much more successful. Okay, so we, we talked about different kind of conditions and when the water's a little bit faster, or it's a little bit deeper, you need to get those flies down to depth quickly, right? So we talked about how you can throw upstream and you can kind of try to get those flies down to depth by giving them more time to sink. Here's something you can try. It's called a tuck cast. So essentially what we want to do, we want our flies to be hitting the water first pretty much every time. I don't want my line landing on the water and then the flies, okay? It should essentially be your flies hitting the water first, okay? There's a thing called the tuck cast, which helps propel those flies into the water so that when they hit the water, they have a lot of downward motion and it's going to help them sink quicker. Essentially what a tuck cast is, it's your oval cast, but you're going to stop at high. And when you stop at high, your line hits the end and it kind of drives those flies down into the water a little bit more. So you're going to stop at high and those flies are going to dive down into the water faster. Stop at high, dive down into the water. You see how they, they really propel down into the water faster. Okay. Of course, anytime you're trying to get deeper, using heavier flies is better. I'm not using heavy flies right now because I'm actually in a shallow run, but stop high and it's really going to force those flies down. That is called a tuck cast. That'll really help you achieve depth, depth more quickly in a lot of situations. Okay, so let's talk about the drift. The drift is going to be incredibly important, right? When you're talking urine and thing, if you want to be in the strike zone and being successful, we need to get our flies in the right locations for as long as possible to have the best chance of being able to connect with fish, right? So we talked about things like water dynamics and insect life and trout behavior, right? We understand that in a river, most of the time, as long as fish aren't rising and there's not hatches happening, most of those fish are going to be on the or near the bottom of the river. They're going to be sitting in that hydraulic cushion that has the slower water, and they're going to be feeding on aquatic insects that are be coming down to them through that lower, slower water, right? So we want our flies to be on or near the bottom going as slow as possible at the speed of the water on the bottom and presenting that to the, to the trout. We're going to be in the strike zone for as long as we can. But there are a lot of factors that are fighting us in being able to do that, right? So we have a lot of moving water. The water along the top is going a lot faster. It's naturally going to want to grab your line and pull your flies up off the, off the bottom. And most of the time, people that don't understand urine and thing or where they fail the most is they're not getting down to those fish and, and being in the strike zone for as long as possible. So what are the keys to being able to achieve that drift for as long as possible? Number one is using appropriately sized flies, right? So when I say size, I don't mean big or small, I mean heavy or light, right? And so 
you're going to adjust your, the weight of your flies depending on the type of water that's in front of you. Right now I've got water that's not really that deep. I don't really need heavy flies here, but if I'm in faster, deeper water, I want to present heavier flies, right? That's number one. It's going to help me get down to depth and it's going to help me stay near the bottom. Okay, so I've still got that faster water going across the top. How am I going to keep that from grabbing my flies and pulling them away from me, right? Okay, so when we talked about leaders, we talked about how there's a portion of the leader that's going to be above the surface of the water almost all the time, right? That's your thicker materials. Um, that's going to be your butt section and it's going to be your high visibility cider. Those are going to be above the water. We don't really want them coming in contact with the water because they're much thicker. Right? And if the water catches them, they're going to really push them downstream more and it's going to lift those flies up off the bottom. The tippet section is going to be much, much thinner. Right? And so when we are fishing, we want to keep our, our thicker cider material off the water column and we want our thin tippet. We want the thin tippet to be what's in the water because it's, because it's thin you're not going to have anywhere near as much resistance on that water, right? So the water is going to go right by it and it's not going to try to pull the line as much. It's going to be able to have that water go around it much easier, okay? So heavy flies, light tippets, right? And so I don't want you to think you got to go so light that you're not going to be able to land a fish, right? I usually typically fish 5X tippet. 5X tippet is going to allow me to land a 20 inch plus fish in most conditions fairly easily. Okay, so I start with 5X, I'll go down to 6X if I need to. The thinner the tippet, the easier you're gonna be able to get down to depth. Okay, so if I'm having trouble getting down to depth, maybe I go with lighter tippet. The other thing is, I need to make sure I'm not laying any line on the water. I need to keep direct contact between the tip of my fly rod and those flies, right? And so, the best way to do that is to keep a very straight line and not lay your line on the water. I don't want that water catching my fly line or my leader material and pulling it and getting my flies off the bottom. So keep a nice straight line between the tip of your rod all the way down to your flies. It's going to aid in strike detection, but it's going to really help you get down to depth. And what I really want to see when I'm looking at the water, I want to see that my leader is going slower than the water on top. You see how that those bubbles are going much faster than my leader here, right? That is essentially telling me that I'm down to depth. So when you first cast into the water, if you're, I'm in slow water here, it's not really gonna show it, but if I'm in faster water, if I'm in faster water, the line's gonna come down at the speed of the current. And then when my flies get down to depth, it's gonna slow down. And suddenly the water's gonna be going a lot faster than my actual flies. That's a good sign. That's exactly what I wanna see. When your line slows down, that's telling you that you're on or near the bottom, you're in that hydraulic cushion, and you're avoiding a lot of the downstream forces that are trying to pull your flies up off the bottom. Okay, so there are a lot of factors when it comes to trying to get your, your fly in the strike zone, but if you keep tight lines, if you use heavy flies, if you use thin tippet, and try to keep you know, only the tippet section in the water, and you keep a tight line between the tip of your rod down to those flies, most of the time you're going to be able to achieve that drift. If you're not achieving the drift, if it's going too fast, you might be in water that's just too fast, you might not be a hydraulic cushion on the bottom as much. So, you know, understanding the hydraulic cushion, the bigger the rocks on the bottom, the more of a hydraulic cushion there's going to be, the slower it's going to slow down. If you're on more of a slate bottom or just a gravelly area, it's not going to slow down quite as much, right? So, but you want to be able to achieve the slowest drift that you possibly can, okay? So again, just in summary, Heavier flies are gonna help you achieve the drift. Keeping a tight line between the tip of your rod and the flies are gonna help you achieve the drift. Having thin tippet and keeping only the tippet section in the water is gonna help you achieve that drift. All right, we are gonna wrap volume four here. I wanna take this opportunity to thank you guys for joining this year Nymphing series. We have just packed a ton of information into these videos and there is so much more coming. You guys asked for the detail and we're trying to deliver as much detail as possible. In fact, um, I think this is becoming probably the most comprehensive urine and fink series out there. Um, in fact, that's what you guys are telling me. So uh, I think that's completely awesome. We're going to definitely continue providing as much information as we can. Volume five is coming next and volume five, again, tackles some really important topics like strike detection, right? Really important to understand. We're gonna get into setting the hook. 
uh, effectively so that you're maximizing your opportunities. And then we're gonna talk a lot about fighting the fish, landing the fish, and handling fish. So again, all really important topics. That is gonna round out our year and thing basics for beginners. And then we're gonna move on to a lot of our advanced videos. And you guys, I know are excited about those because you've been telling me, and I'm excited to do those too. So thank you for joining us. Remember, we are gonna be doing the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. We're gonna give away the uh, seven and a half foot three weight beaver metal S glass from JP Ross. When we hit 10,000 subscribers, we will be announcing that giveaway. So definitely subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you know that is coming. And hey, that's it for now. We will see you very soon for volume five.